Hey everybody, this is Dawn Burke and you are watching No Scrubs, the only show on the internet here to help you have no bad hires. Of course, I am a contributor at Fistful of Talent and No Scrubs is brought to you by our friends at Jobvite. That's J-O-B. V-I-T-E. Uh, we are going to talk about recruiting processes and thinking about our recruiting a little differently with our good friend, John Hudson. How are you today? I'm doing great, Don. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. Um, All right. Life is good. Got a great guest. So speaking of great guests, why don't you tell uh, the audience a little bit about who you are and what you do? All right. Uh, well, I'm an HR business partner here in Chicago, a company by the name of Slalom Consulting. I am their internal HR guy, uh, supporting our Midwest markets here in uh, Minneapolis, St. Louis, Detroit, and Chicago. Um, better part of 20 plus years uh, doing the HR game. Uh, you know, anywhere from sort of the generalist background, recruiting, uh, you name it. I've probably touched it in my career. Absolutely. So, of course, if you don't know, uh, John, you are a blogger, correct? Right. Uh, that's correct. I mean, I'm, 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 yes. And in, in, uh, early career blogger, if you All right. Will. Very well. But so check out, where can people check you out? Uh, it is my blog at johnphudson.wordpress.com. Um, is where you can find the blog. All right. And if you want great ideas of a variety of delicious pancakes, um, John is the pancake guy. Uh, could you uh, got a favorite pancake you could share with the crowd? Oh gosh, uh, <laughs> I caught you off guard with that one. I know. No, I'll tell you this: uh, we're coming up on the fall season, and while I'm not a big fan uh, of the flavors and anything else, my pumpkin spice pancakes are fantastic. They've so. got to be. They've got to be. Take a take a look for those in the next few weeks. All right, great. All right, check them out. Pancakes, John Hudson. All right, let's get to recruiting. All right. Um, so the blog post that we are talking about is one that is uh, talks about recruiting processes and us looking at them a little bit differently. I think most people in the audience would agree that um, some of our processes are too lengthy regarding recruiting and hiring, too costly, and mainly because there's too many variables. It could be too many decision makers. It could be that too, too big of a pay range to negotiate. A lot of the times the hiring manager, the recruiter, and the candidate don't really know what the job requirements are, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's nothing new. Um, so one of the things that uh, we uh, are going to talk about is a company called Brandless. I read about a company called Brandless that seemed to have the same exact issues, not with recruiting, but basically uh, regarding customers' experience with shopping. So what Brandless is, it's an online retailer that has uh, only way you can purchase it is online so it eliminates the store variable every product is three dollars three dollars so eliminates any kind of a pay range variable right. um it's much more uh efficient because yeah. there's only one choice of each staple so they have toiletries and they have um, groceries but all they sell is peanut butter no label just peanut butter not 15 choices um, so they also are cutting out costs regarding the they're not the middleman between um, retailers, between marketing, between brands, et cetera. So the customers have a better experience. It's quicker. They still get a damn good product, um, even if it's a minimal viable one. And uh, there we go. All right. So yeah. I think that kind of scopes it out. So I just want to throw out a couple of quick hit uh, questions for you to see if HR recruiting could actually incorporate some of these thoughts. So I think one of the first places we can start with uh, in looking at the comparisons between brandless and a new recruiting process is eliminating so many middlemen, AKA right. your AKA tiered interviews with, you know, four, five, six, seven decision makers. Do you think that's even possible? Can a one and done interview happen? One interview done, make a decision. Sure. Um, and with my many years of experience in HR, I'm going to give you an HR answer. Yeah. Uh, it depends. Um, ah, very nice. Very good. I, yes, I, I believe it can. It's been proven that it can. Uh, when you look at, um, I think recently Amazon just had a hiring event where they wanted to hire 50,000 people in one day. Um, and there are certain type of jobs that I think um, could easily uh, eliminate the, the need to have people keep coming back um, back for an interview. There are certain uh, types of, uh, of roles though that I, I think 
uh, when you're talking about a sales job, um, something that's customer focused, you're asking someone to go in front of a customer for you. Uh, having a mu- enough time to build a relationship to understand that person's background a little bit more, how they're going to represent you, uh, I, I think you're going to need more than just a 30-minute interview yeah. or a one-hour on-site interview. So I, I think there are a lot of jobs um, that, that you don't need to have four, five, six different interviews, um, especially if you do a thorough job either on your application, uh, pre-screening, uh, anything of that anything of that nature. I, I, some of those are, are just a waste of time. Yeah, and I think what's interesting, I, I tend to agree that having a few uh, different uh, opinions in the mix helps make a, a pretty subjective decision-making pro- process more objective. I've always thought that. However, yep. if we could get a lot more clear on the variables, not have so many, what is actually what is actually being hired for? Um, yep. I don't know why it can't be condensed immensely. Um, and at some point, if the CEO still thinks they need to be in every interview, um, then I think we've got some bigger problems. Right. Uh, it, you know, so I tend to agree, but I definitely think if people are all on point with the one or two things that need to yep. be no brainers. Why do we have to have four levels of interview? Great. So, all right, very good. So, um, what do you think about the concept of there being really no salary band? Every job starts with one salary. It's posted, no negotiations, because, it, it, and there's a yin, there's a, a yin to this and a yang to it. Actually, two parts to it. For that to work, you then also would have to say we don't necessarily have to have the highly preferred candidate. You can have that minimal requirements filled. Uh, Go. What do you think? For (laughs) each position in the organization, sure. Um, You know, I I think a lot of the issues that when you look at at gender pay and a lot of the inequities that are going on right now, it's because organizations don't sit there and say, this is what we're going to pay. This is what we're paying for the role. Here it is. Instead, we were like, well, what do you make, Don? Oh, you make that? Well, John over here makes this, so I can make a little more money if I give Don less, and John wants more, so I got to appease him. I think that's where we get into uh, a lot of the issues and the big issue we have today. And organizations, you know, they like to save a dollar. Right. And if you say, hey, this, this job pays $50,000, and I know this as a candidate, I can select whether I want that role or not. Yep. Um, you know, if I want to make more than that, guess what? I'm not going to apply for that job. Yeah. Uh, but if I have the skills and the quality, or if I have the skills for that, it shouldn't matter what I make before, where I am now. Um, but you know, I, I think that's that's something the company should be doing. Yeah. Uh, being and a right. lot more explicit on, on here's what we pay for this job. Here it is. Mm-hmm. No sneaky. You know, when the candidate says, well, what's the job I pay? And then favorite recruiters like, well, what do you make? Right. It's like, don't answer my question with a question. Tell right. me what the job pays. Right. <laughs> That's not the time to do this. Yeah, so. you know, and then what we're doing is we're sometimes going to, uh, whether it's intentional or not, sometimes intentional, I think a lot of times not, we'll pay somebody less than what they're worth because they're not good negotiators. And quite yep. frankly, if your job doesn't require you having great negotiation skills, well, then Absolutely. shame on us, right? All right. Um, I like this concept, by the way. Mm-hmm. It's something to experiment with. Unless it's me trying to get a job, then, you know, that, that rules. But terrible. if you know what it is, you're not going to apply for that job if it's Absolutely. not what you're looking for, right? Absolutely. And, and I, There's I, that transparency. Yeah, I, I completely agree. All right. Then I think the last thing I want to talk a little bit about is, you know, what do we do about the job description confusion? Yeah. Um, some companies are like, Ugh, do we need job descriptions? Other companies are like, wow, we need a four-page job description. Um, nevertheless, we can't be efficient. We can't know the right proper pay the pay if we don't have an understanding, really, of, of what the job entails. So you know, give me your thoughts on that, on how we make this a more efficient play with the job descriptions. Yeah. Um, if you look at any typical job description, you have your minimum requirements and then the highly preferred. Yeah. And those that meet the minimum requirements, we then tell them, Oh, uh, yeah, but you didn't have what we highly preferred. Why have a minimum and a highly preferred? If you need someone to have something, put it in the requirements. Don't mess around and say, you know, I'd love for you to have a master's. And you're only, if you're only going to hire someone with a master's, put it in there. Agreed. 
as the you know we don't, I don't the minimum and the highly preferred needs to go away. Tell me what you're looking for. Don't get cute, you know. And, and I think that's a frustration for a lot of people. Is look, I'm meeting the minimum requirements here. Yeah, yeah but you didn't have these other two that we said were highly preferred. Right. So if you then eliminate. Why did you that. waste my time? Why did you waste yeah, my time? Exactly. And and I think we get to um, too cute. We overthink it. Yeah. And. And, you know, it caused a lot of frustration on the job seeker. Because um, if you need that, just say you need it. Agreed. That's, yeah. You know, and Make I think them. sometimes, you know, again, I really do believe that most hiring managers, HR departments, corporations, they want to do the right thing. They, they're not right. trying to pull a fast one, et cetera. But at the end of the day, these are making the candidate experiences bad. It is taking sure. too long to hire roles, which does nobody well. Um, and, again, I think a lot of the times, just like brandless, Hey, we're only going to give you one choice of peanut butter. Yep. That's all you need. And studies will show a lot of times too many choices uh, causes a lot of stress for human beings. So, sure. so if we can narrow this down, I think the quote of today's session is don't get cute. Let's not get cute. Let's just yep. get down to the brass tacks. Um, I think perhaps there is some stuff from this brandless model that we could be looking at in the future. I agree. Think? All right, my friend. So that will be the last word for today. Um, Tell people, John, where they can, can they see you anywhere? Do you have a Twitter yeah. handle? This uh, next five weeks, you can see me a lot of places. I'll be at uh, Illinois Sherm coming up this weekend. Uh, we'll be at Wisconsin Sherm in October. Uh, ALA conference, I'm speaking of that in October as well. Um, and then you can always see me on my blog. All right. So if you want great pancake tips and more importantly, great HR uh, tips, check out John Hudson. John, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure. Oh, my gosh. And we're going to get you back on the show for sure. Um, all right, my thank friends. Uh, thanks to Jobvite. And you have been watching No Scrubs. I am Dawn Burke. Until next time. Bye.